So one of the biggest barriers to people joining a gym is the thought that you need to be spending hours and hours inside in there. But what if I was to tell you that if you want to get an effective result, you want to grow a lot more muscle, a lot more strength than you have right now, that you don't need to be spending the equivalent amount of time as a high level bodybuilder or someone who has nothing else going on in their life other than the gym. If you want to build muscle, you want to build strength, you can get a lot done in just 30 minute workouts. So today's video is going to be centered around what I would do if I was a lazy con and just wanted to get an effective workout on my legs. So the jumps that you can make in weight in your warm-up sets is obviously going to be proportional to how strong you are. For example, because my one rep max on a squat is let's say 190 kilos, I can go from 60 kilos to 110 kilos to maybe 140 kilos before I get cracking into my working sets. Whereas if you can only squat 60 kilos or 80 kilos, well then you might start off with a bar, then you might go to 40 kilos before you get into your working sets. Should go without saying. So per exercise today, I'm only gonna do two sets. For the purpose of giving you a blueprint as to how you can get an effective workout done in 30 minutes or less. However, that doesn't come without its trade-offs. The trade-off that you're gonna to have to make for being someone who's only doing two sets per exercise is the fact that you're gonna to have to go even more balls to the wall within those two sets than you otherwise would if you're doing three or four sets. So more so than on any other occasion or following any other split, you're just gonna to have to leave everything in the tank. You're only doing a handful of sets, you're doing a lot less than you typically would. So it's so, so important that the quality of those sets is so much higher. A common misconception about muscle growth is that you need to be doing a fuck ton of sets per body part per week in order to build muscle. But that's not true. In fact, if you were to do 10 really, really high quality sets, close to failure, if not two failure sets per week, you're gonna build a hell of a <laughs> sound like Joe Biden. You're gonna build a hell of a lot more muscle that way than doing 20 half hour sets per body part per week. So the quality is always going to come before the quantity. And even just me in here doing, let's say, four total sets for quads, four total sets for hamstrings within a session, if I do that twice per week, and both of those sessions are really, really high intensity, I'm going to build a hell of a lot of muscle and strength that way. So when it comes to exercise selection for the hamstrings, you're to do just two exercises, one of which is ideally going to be a hamstring curl variation, where you're bringing your heel up to your bum. The second one is going to be a hinge. So it's essentially me bringing my chest towards the floor, kicking my arse back while maintaining just a slight bend in the knees. So for this reason, the two exercises that I'm going to pick for hamstrings is going to be an RDL, and then later on, we're going to do a seated hamstring curl. get myself a set of fucking lifting straps. Oh shit, we made a pact not to fucking talk about the need for lifting straps in the last video and I'm just after failing my pact. Haven't got a set of lifting straps, have you? Yeah, like, uh, like wrist straps? Or Anything like at all. Straps to hold on to the bar. Uh, hold on to the bar. Figure eight? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, thank, thank you. <laughs> I need to go one video without talking about lifting straps. Intensity builds density. <coughs> Fuck. If you want to save extra time on your workout, don't put back your weights. <laughs> I'm just joking, Gary will kick me out. The problem about doing this workout is the fact that I've trained my chest and my back with like t nine and 12 sets. And I'm only training my quads with four sets in the workout, so I'm gonna have crippling body dysmorphia for the next few days. And when you're walking, it's technically leg day, isn't it? That's the logic I go by anyway. So every day is leg day. Literally. 
So when it comes to effective quad development, you want one exercise that's like a squat variation. So that could be any double leg squat, that could be a single leg squat, that could be a leg press, you get the gist. But you also want to get a leg extension variation or an exercise that keeps your hips in a fixed position. The reason being is because there's one particularly long head of the quadricep that is not effectively stimulated when it comes to doing a leg press or a squat variation. So this is where the leg extension comes in. So in essence, if you want to optimally develop your legs or if you're doing a minimalist workout like this one, one of the quad exercises that I highly recommend you include is going to be this bad boy. like deja vu from being in this exact position on this exact machine with Jamie being in the exact same pose. Also, to really save time on your leg workouts, just don't train your calves, wear extra long socks so it looks like you've got calves. So a few of my, a few of my Tinder conversations have been a little bit explicit lately. I was thinking, the chances of one of my Tinder matches exploiting my less than PG messages is, is very high. Over the course of six months, I'd nearly say it's a certainty. So I'm like, should I do a video exposing my own Tinder chat up lines and conversations so that if someone comes out and says, see what this pervert Sean Fitz said to me, it's like, yeah, he did a video on it. Like and subscribe, comment down below if I should do that. that that's that exercise, yeah. Two sets of extensions, two sets of squats, two sets of RDLs, and the last exercise is gonna be two sets of seated leg curl. Important to note, the vast majority of you taking my advice are probably somewhere closer to the beginner end of the spectrum when it comes to your gym and your fitness journey. So even more to the point, you have a lot more to gain out of a low amount of sets per body part per week than someone who's closer to the advanced end of the spectrum. So you should not be thinking that you need to be spending hours in the gym, that you need to dedicate your whole entire life to getting to the gym, to working out in order to build muscle. You have a hell of a lot of potential going to the gym three or four times a week, even for 30, 40 minutes at a time. Do that consistently over a long enough period of time. You'd be unrecognizable. Now, if two sets per body part just isn't quite cutting the mustard for you, and you feel as though you're capable of a little bit more, what you can do is just half the weight or drop the weights significantly and do a third set, but that set being immediately after the second one ends. So it's a drop set, adding just a little bit more volume, a little bit more fatigue, and potentially some damage to the muscles to help them grow a little bit more. Ah. Fuck that, get me out of here. So on the point of drop sets, if you wanted to speed up the pace of your workout, you wanted to get it done in a little bit quicker time, manipulate the rest periods. So maybe rather than resting two minutes in between sets, you might rest one minute. Yes, that may come at the cost of you being able to do a little bit less reps, a little bit less weight than you could do if you rested a little bit more. But there is something to be said as far as the mechanisms of muscle growth goes for that pump sensation, which is usually enhanced with slightly shorter rest periods. In an ideal world, you will rest as much as you need to perform as best as you can in subsequent sets. But if time is an issue, if you're just concerned with getting in and out as quickly as you possibly can, you could do worse than to shorten the rest periods. So there we have it, a minimalist's guide to leg training. Do that session twice per week. Train hard, train with intensity, train balls to the wall fucking fader. You will grow a hell of a lot of muscle and strength doing just that. More is not always better, especially if that comes at the cost of the quality of your sets being a little bit inferior. So focus on making the handful of sets that you're doing the best sets that you possibly can. Push yourself as much as you can, get in and out of the gym and do that for a long enough period of time and you will build a hell of a lot of muscle and strength. Mm -hmm.